Yeah, one afternoon to all of you. So, so this is the reason why I am standing in front of, in front of you today. So we have pub, uh, okay. At the very beginning, I want to thank our director and uh, committee members for choosing this uh, work for this award. So we have done this work uh, uh, discussing the effect of electrical forces on the cloud microphysical processes in tropical cloud. I have co-authored this paper with uh, S.D. Power and Anubhav Hazra, uh, my thesis advisor, along with Mohan Kaur, P. Gopal Krishnan, M.K. Srivastava, and B.N. Goswami as co my co-authors. So, and, uh, <coughs> so in next 20, next 20 minutes, I will in, I will, I'm going to introduce you a new aspect of electrical phenomenon, which apart from our daily use of electricity in our as a power source. Okay, so at some point of time uh, in our life, all of us, all of us has observed this light, lightning, right? So this is a nice picture of lightning actually. So this is, a, uh, this is actually a real picture of lightning taken in optical uh, camera. So you can see here from the initiation of the lightning to the striking of the ground, right? So you can see this illuminated signal. This is actually the return stroke from the ground. So you can see here the bidirectional initiation of the lightning. So, and you can see that tree-like pattern inside the cloud, right? So, what is basically lightning? And in long back in 1857, Benjamin Franklin suggested that lightning is nothing but the electrical phenomena that we observe in our household electrical appliances in the, in the form of spark, right? Spark is nothing but the release of electrical stress that we observe in our day-to-day in -day life. So, lightning is nothing but same, that it is the release of electrical stress in our, in our atmosphere. So how does cloud become electrified? So there are many mechanisms proposed to explain the electrification of the cloud. So one mechanism is the convective charging mechanism where the cloud convection brings the charge upward and the charge, the charge gets attached to the cloud drops and they, the cloud gets electrified. The most accepted, all accepted hypothesis of cloud electrification is the non-interactive charging mechanism where this uh, cloud particle like gropel, ice and this uh, snow they interact, they collide, they break up, and because of their differential velocity, uh, they, the charge gets separated because different sides, uh, because this ice and gropel, when they interact, this ice crystal carries this positive charge, and the gropel particles, which are heavier, they bring the negative charge downward. So you can see here a nice dipole structure of the cloud. So most of the lightning we observe in, in our life, uh, in our day-to-day -day life, it comes from this uh, search center. So again, the, uh, there is a small center observed, um, observed in thunder cloud. This is known as the lower search center. So interaction, particle movement, and uh, growth of the hydrometer establish the electrification inside the cloud. So once the electrification is established, now they are submerged in a very strong electric environment. Now let us see how they are going to respond to the electric environment. So as you can see here, the interaction this interaction of these uh, particles create very high electric environment. It is 2.5 into the minus 4 coulomb per meter square is the charge density inside the cloud, which is pretty high. And this is the electric field, which is quite high. So, so the, now, the, now the particles, the cloud particles or raindrops, they are submerged in a very strong electric environment. So now we will see how they are go going to respond to the electric environment. So before that, let us first see how rain forms. So we all know that in warm cloud, basically build up freezing level, rain forms by basically collision and collision of cloud drops, right? So how can we quantify it? We can quantify it by using a term known as collision efficiency, which is nothing but the ratio of uh, collision cross-section and geometric cross-section. As we know in normal situation, when the drops is neutral, so um, that, that drops, uh, uh, which are in vicinity, they all of us will never collide with the, 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 this drop, right? So some drops will just get through, right? So uh, this consistency, this because uh, will always be less unity as uh, as the which is geometric collision cross section is always be greater than collision cross section. So as you can see from in this graph, I have taken from the Swarm metal 1976. So it, as you can see, the collision efficiency is always less than one unity. So now let's see what is happening when the drop is charged. So you can see when two drops are charged, there will always be some attractive force in between the, in, in between the charge, right? 
So as you can see here, this is the bigger drop and these are the smaller drops. So as you can see, this I have taken from Ken to 2004. So now you can see the collision cross section is greater than the geometric cross section. Because all the drops which come to the vicinity of the drops, or they will all collide with the, this bigger drops, right? So which makes this collision, collision efficiency is much, much better, greater than, in, uh, I mean, unity. So you can see here, this is I have taken from Ken to 2004. So you can see here, much increase in the collision efficiency. Uh, this is uh, independent investigation by some metal, so you can see the collision efficiency, which is much, much greater than the, when the drop is neutral, right? So for the first time in 1970, 1879, Lord really observed that when a particle that water subject to an feeble electrical force, the water that so coherent behavior. What do you mean by coherent behavior? Suppose when we see as water Z, at the summit of the summit of the Z, the water when kinetic energy is get minimized, that drops scattered, right? So when he subject the Z to a electric force, he saw that rather than the, the, rather the drop get coalesced, rather than getting, getting scattered. So that drops go little up because of the coalesce on the drops. Okay. So as you know, uh, can say that presence of electrical force, electric charge or electrical force on drops can influence its collision coalition efficiency. So, and we, we expect that the physics laws should behave similarly. If we, something, so if we see something in the laboratory, we also, we can expect, or we can anticipate to see it in the atmosphere, atmosphere as well, right? So let's see how this uh, anticipated, uh, anticipated, uh, I mean, effect is going to is going to manifest in our real atmosphere. Uh, so yeah, so uh, as we know, cloud is very uh, uh, complex. Uh, this uh, uh, cloud is uh, complex. Purpose are very complex, right? So dynamics, microphysics, electrification, all they interact with each other, right? So and making uh, this uh, to separate one event is very difficult. So. Then how to separate it, separate out one effect? Suppose electrical effect. So our best bet is stratiform rain. Because in stratiform rain, the particle velocity is very weak, right? Near to one, one meter per second. And in stratiform rain, the rain formation process is nearly uniform compared to the convective, convective part, right? So if we want to see the effect of electrical forces on the rain formation process, the best candidate which can study is the rain dust distribution. Because if collision collision is modified by electrical forces, we, can, we, we expect to see some modification in the rain drop size distribution, right? So we have studied the rain drop size distribution to see the electrical effect on the rain microphysical processes. For, for that purpose, we have used micro radar and ground-based impact distributor installed at a high altitude cloud physics laboratory at HCPL in Mahabalatsar. And we use our IITM lightning network data to study the electrical characteristic of all the events we have considered for our study. Okay, so here are some, here are some stratiform rain. You can see there's a bright band. There's a this is called bright band. It, it indicates that particular velocity is very weak. So you can see a band here around 3.3 kilometers from the ground. So this is one set of event. This is one set of event. So presence of band indicate that both the sets of events are strictly from rain. That means they are, they are having less particular velocity and rain, the, rain formation, the primary rain formation process is the vapor deposition at the upper level uh, around uh, six, kilo, 6 to 7 kilometer and when the ice crystal comes down, they uh, aggregates to from the larger uh, uh, yeah, larger aggregates. And when they drift down below the melting layer, they melt and they form the raindrops, right? So I call this set of, set of events as strongly rectified. And I call this, this set of events as weakly rectified. I am going to tell you why I call this set of events strongly rectified. Because for the set, uh, in the left hand side, I saw presence of lightning near to the observatory. You can see the presence of lightning in every set of events in the, in the left panel. In the right panel, in a hundred kilometer, hundred uh, kilometer by kilometer, hundred kilometer, hundred by hundred kilometer box, do not observe any lightning activity. That's why I call this set of events as strongly electrified. 
and this is our events are equally rectified. So now let's move back to move to the profile of particle profile of rain. This is the this is this shows the particle profile of rain rate. So you can see both the averaged over all the six six events. So you can see that they are having almost similar rain rate profile rain rate. But when you go back go, go to the profile of diameter, you can see substantially larger drops in strongly electrified events in the below the melting layer compared to the weakly electrified defense. This, this is about, about six events, strongly electrified defense. This shows the distribution of raindrops at 2400 meter, 1200 meter, and 600 meter. When you see the distribution, you can see the presence of very large drop, very high number of of large drop in case of strongly electrified defense at all the levels. And when you come back to the lower bin size, you can see a compensating decrease or reduction of the smaller drops. What this, this, that the, what this, what this mean? This means that the smaller drops are getting coalesced from the bigger ones. When the electric for electric environment is very strong. Yeah, so it is getting, uh, so yeah. So the bigger drops, formation of bigger drops might be caused by some factor below the melting layer, right? Yeah. So I have plotted this in extended scale. So uh, this same diameter profile. So you can see in weakly electrified defense, there is a not much particle, particle variability in the diameter profile. But when you see the strongly electrified defense, you can see continuous increase of size, right, coming to the ground. So this is uh, increase of size per meter, you can see the growth rate. So you can see drops are continuously acquiring mass. But here you can see it is, I mean, uh, the mean is almost variability is very less. So this is uh, supported by this independent observation by Matos et al. So they have plotted actually differential reflectivity, but ZDR and MDB are linearly associated. So we can say, so this blue dot line sits for uh, events that are not associated with lightning. So you can see that mean profile is is means that there, 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 there is not much particle variability in here. But when lightning is there, in the three cases, there is large deviation, right? That drops are increasing mass, increasing size when they are coming down. So how this is happening? So yeah, this is the uh, ground uh, raindrops, raindrops are distribution. So you can see they are having almost similar rain intensity, but in strongly electrified defense, rain Bigger drops contribute more to the rain than the smaller drop, than the smaller drops, right? So yeah, so concentration of larger drops increases at the expense of the smaller drops. So how this is happening? So when there is size of drops, when they collide, right, they will coalesce for any impact angle. They collide, they collide with, right? So in normal situation, when the drops is coming down, they will collide, they will coalesce, they will evaporate, right? They will break up. Right? So that's why there is not much variability you can see. You can see in, in here. So they will achieve equilibrium. But when there is some factor which is helping the drops to acquire continuous mass, right? Conti so or to in in increase size. Right? So it, it will show continuous growth to the ground. So we propose that this factor is electric force inside strongly electrified cloud. So there's a common observation, right? We observe when there's a lightning discharge in our, in our vicinity, if we observe for some time, we can see the enhancement of rain intensity. So this is, uh, old, we, call, we call the enhancement as rain gas. So this is, I have documented some rain gas here over the HCCPL laboratory. So here, it, it, this particle bars correspond to the lightning time, this particle bars. And you can see with every, with within uh, two to uh, three minutes after the lightning, there is sudden enhancement in the rain intensity, right? You can see. So here there is two lightning, there is two peaks, right? So this is well documented rain, rain, rain gas, right? So but how this is happening? The microphysical process is not all understood. So it is proposed that this is happening because before the lightning, electric force can levitate the 
precision particles. So when the electric lightning happens, the electric force goes down and the, all the drops will fall down. That will enhance the uh, precipitation intensity. So here I am presenting the drop size distribution. Averest over many cases of rain gas. So this red one is after the lightning and the blue is before the lightning. So we can see this is obvious because rain gas is, uh, rain is increasing, so the larger drop is increasing. But you can see a corresponding decrease of sm smaller drops. So when we see the relative changes, we can see that at smaller bean size, the drops number concentration decreases, while at bigger size, they increases. That means lightning somehow influencing the collision and collision of the drops, forming the bigger drops. This is a nice picture. So you can see this is HCSPL. So this is the density of the lightning. So you can see here, for this is for uh, the different time period. So same day, this is uh, 1550 to 1530. This is 1530 to 16. So half an hour difference. So you can see for this period, there's lightning activity going on over the observatory. For, but, but for this period, lightning activity has drifted little, almost two kilometer. So if you, if you see the time series of the diameter and number concentration, you can see nice seesaw of the drops. When the drop size goes up, their number concentration goes down. But when it is drifted apart, they are nice and friendly. So when size increasing, number concentration increases. So this is actually normal. So if you see there are, so when rain intensity increases, both, both actually number and size increases. But this is, is our, 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 our interest. Yeah, so as we see, a single lightning event can, lightning can influence the rain intensity, so we expect that a higher lightning frequency should also affect the rain rate. So here we have analyzed the uh, relation between flash slot, flash slot and rain rate. So we can see nice correlation with some time-like correlation for all the events, uh, which are three minutes, six minutes, and uh, this is six minutes. So we can see that higher flash rate produce higher electric, electric particles, which thereby effect of intensity of precipitation. Okay. So how this uh, lightning is affecting the precipitation? So there is two mechanisms. One is that it is, propo it is proposed and observed that lightning deposits a huge amount of ions near its channel. So it ionizes the air molecules. The ions get attached to the um, uh, raindrops or cloud drops and make them electrified. The electrified drop, I mean, uh, efficiently coalesce and co 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 collide and coalesce and from the bigger drops, which also impact the ground, ground rain intensity. And, uh, and other mechanism is, is that lightning can emit very high intense, high energized, uh, high energized particles like X-ray, gamma ray, they are very highly ionizing. So these ionizing particles ionize the air molecules, the ions, then the ions get attached to the raindrops or cloud drops, make them, making them electrified and the electrified drops again Collides efficiently and collide, collide and collides efficiently and makes the uh, raindrops bigger, which influence the rain intensity. So here I have simulated some rainfall events that are associated with the lightning using WRF model. So I have used Morrison microphysical scheme. So you can see this is the observed rainfall from uh, uh, recorded by distrometer, and this is the simulated rain, simulated simulated rainfall using Morrison scheme. So you can see. So yeah, so again, same PPTs. So you, you can see, s I mean, substantial underestimation, right? So uh, to see uh, why it is happening, we have plotted the drop size distribution. So you can see the model is not able to capture the bigger drops, right? So that is, uh, that may be causing the, you know, uh, underestimation of the, you know, rainfall. So this is also supported by independent investigation of the Zinaros and Duffy's recently. So they have got similar things. That when lightning is there, the model does not, can, can, uh, model is not able to capture the precipitation intensity. It allows underestimate. What may be the cause of underestimation? So our first guess from our observation is that absence of electrical feedback in the cloud microphysical processes. Uh, as far as I know, there is until now most of the model does, doesn't have uh, feedback from the electrical model to the cloud module, right? So. So then, then how to bring it? How, to, how can we bring the electrical process to the model, right? So the best 
uh, can that is to modify the render size distribution because the model simulator range index is highly sensitive to the assumed render, render size distribution. So we have brought in the observed distribution to the model modifying the motion scheme. So you can see here, so with modified motion scheme, there is a substantial enhancement, improvement in the range intensity. And you can see as well as the range of such distribution. Right? So you can see substantial improvement in the as a range density as well as in uh, I mean range of such distribution. That means the with our modified scheme, which we modified with our observed range of such distribution in electrified events, so we get some improvement in the simulated simul rainfall. Uh, because this is a, a master parameter. Actually, this this is gamma. So, uh, sorry. So I can, can I could not get this uh, set parameter from the model to make it gamma. That's why it, it's I mean saying master parameter one. So my conclusion is that so in cloud in 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 cloud where electric environment is very strong, they can broaden the range of such distribution which in return can modify the precipitation intensity. So, as we know, as electric forces set, is, you know, influencing the precipitation intensity, we can take a possible route, as electrical route, to, you know, realize the, you know, intensity simulation of precipitation. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, the so electric forces there in the atmosphere to facilitate us as students and uh, increase the hard work of modelers a little bit more, maybe. So yeah, I'm thankful to Director of ITM for constant support, and I'm especially thankful to HCCPL scientific and you know, technical and scientific staff who provide me very high quality data for my study, and this is my home group, Thunderstone Dynamics. Thanks.